What is up guys? In the last video we went over how we could use arrays and in this video we're going to be using something that's very similar and these are sets, dictionaries and tuples. So don't worry, I'm going to be going over what these are and how we can use them in Swift. So the first one we're going to go over is the set and to create it we're going to first create a variable called user ID and this is going to consist of a set of user IDs. And to create a set, we actually need to specify that this is a set. And we're going to add the angle brackets. And inside here, we're just going to add some IDs such as 111, 112, 113, and 114. Right below it, we're going to go ahead and print user IDs. And then we have to insert the user ID. And when we run it, we're going to get something that looks exactly like a list. But what I did not mention earlier is that a set can only consist of one of each value, which means if we decide to put, let's say, another ID that is 111, this set is going to render it as four elements because we cannot have duplicates of the same item in the same list. So when we run the program, it's still going to output the same result. And also one thing to keep in mind is that a set will always be in a random order. So it's not guaranteed that you'll have 113 as number one and 112 as the last one. It's always going to mix them up because it's a very fast way to render these items. But just like most lists, we can do special things such as insert elements. So we can go ahead and type in insert and here we can go 115. And we can also go ahead and type in user ID dot remove. And we're just going to remove one, one, one. So the new list is still going to be of only four items, except we're not going to have one, one, one anymore. And let's go ahead and copy what we had earlier and paste it right under. And we can change this to updated list. Now you're going to notice on the second one that we do not have 111 anymore, but we have 112, 113, 114, and 115. So a set is just a very quick way for us to make sure we have a list without any duplicates. But now we're going to move on to dictionaries. And to create a dictionary, we're just going to go ahead and create a variable as always. And this time we can just create an empty pair of angle brackets and inside here, we're going to give it some key value pairs. So this dictionary is going to consist of a key value that's going to compare the food and tell us whether it is a fruit or a vegetable. So apple, of course, is a fruit and a carrot is going to be considered a vegetable. And finally, we're going to add a potato, which is also considered a vegetable. And here I made a small error. This should be a colon. So as you can see, each key value pair has a key, which is apple, and the type, which is fruit. And you can actually make any key you want. You can say apple underscore one, two, three. You just need to write something that you can remember later and that you can use later. I'm just going to keep it at apple for now. And now we can go ahead and print these items. So items, and when we print it, it's going to give us the exact same output as what we have up here. But now let's try to access an item. So we can go ahead and print items at the index of Apple. And this is going to return us an optional, which means it doesn't really know if this is going to exist in the list. So if we run the program, we're going to get optional of type fruit. But of course, as always, to get rid of the optional, we can unwrap it by adding the nil coalescing operator. And if it doesn't exist, we're just going to type doesn't exist. So now we can refer to it and we can get the real value. If we refer to a key that does not exist, such as ASD, we're going to get doesn't exist. But we can also go ahead and add keys and values to the dictionary. And to do that is very simple. All we have to do is create a new key. So we can pretend we want oranges. And the value we're going to assign to oranges is going to be a fruit. And we can even change keys. So for example, we can go ahead and type in items at the index of potato. And we're going to just for some reason turn it into, let's change it to unknown. Now when we go ahead and print these items, 
you're going to learn that we just changed it by adding a potato, which is now unknown, and we added oranges as a fruit. Finally, we're going to move on to tuples, which are used for holding mixed data types. So we're going to create a variable called test. And to create a tuple, you just need to use parentheses. So this can hold one, false, it can hold a string of hello, and it can even hold another tuple. So inside here, we can go ahead and add the name Florian and the name of Philip. And just for a more realistic example, I'm going to go ahead and create a tuple of Apple. So here we're going to add some key value pairs such as food kind, and that's going to be a fruit, followed by the sugar, and we're going to set the sugar to, let's say 77 grams of sugar. Now we can provide a round key which is going to be set to true. So whether the apple is round or not. And it's actually better if we type in is round because it looks like I was using a reserved word. So now it's time to show you how we can access these items from both of these lists or from both of these tuples. So the first way to access items is to just use dot notation. So for example, in var test, we can go ahead and type in test dot, and then it's going to tell us which index number we want to use. So if we just print test dot zero, we're going to get the value of one. If we go test dot one, we're going to get the value of false. Test dot two is the value of hello. And now comes the interesting part because we have a tuple inside a tuple, which is at point three. So if we print that, we're going to get this tuple and we can continue the dot notation by adding another dot. And it gives us the suggestion to either return this one or the second one. So if we click on 3.1, we're going to get Philip as a return. 3.0 is going to give us Florian. So this dot notation is a quick way to access these elements, but the reason I created a second one is to show you something that looks a lot easier to read. And we're just going to go ahead and first refer to Apple and now when we click the dot, you're going to notice we will get these three different kinds of returns, such as sugar, food kind, and is round. And this just makes it so much easier to read because now we know what we're looking at. If we want to know the sugar, we type in apple.sugar, and it's gonna say 77. If we want to know what kind of fruit the apple is, we just add that and it's going to say fruit. And finally, if we want to change the value of a certain element, we can go ahead and just use dot notation and update it accordingly. So now if we go ahead and print apple, we're going to notice that it's going to say food kind, fruit, sugar is now set to 80 and it is still round. But that just about covers the three remaining lists that I wanted to show you. And in the next video, I'm going to be going over type conversion so that we can also handle what happens if we want to convert a string into an integer or an integer into a float.